In episode 65, the third last episode of the Digimon Adventure 2020 reboot, we saw all eight of the heroes Mega Digimon finally assemble Avengers style, but we also got the 100% revelation of this show's plot, and for as much as we knocked the show for having no story, I actually think the story it just laid out for us is kind of incredible. Now that's a bold claim, don't worry, I'll justify that a little later in the video because first and foremost, this is the episode 65 review on the Digino, and if you're brand new here, welcome, and I hope you're not just watching this without having seen the show. Obviously big spoilers for everything Digimon Adventure 2020 up until now, especially because we just had the show's plot finally, finally explained to us once and for all, and I'm going to be talking about it. This one begins immediately where we left off. We have every partner Mega unlocked and all of the crests gathered when suddenly a void in the sky of the digital world opens up. Images of the digital world begin surrounding the kids, showing footage of locations we've spent time in during this adventure. Weirdly, Leomon and other Digimon are also getting these visuals around them and they report that the white void in the sky is appearing everywhere. Interestingly, two holy Digimon, Tailmon slash Gatamon and Lopmon, they meet for the first time in this series and it's kind of awkward and unceremonious. They're just both in a FaceTime call and say like, oh hey yeah I've heard about you, which is kind of odd since they were technically old war buddies in a past life. It also makes me realize how strange it is that we have a third holy Digimon survivor of the ancient war in this series with Lopmon and Lopmon just doesn't have a partner human like Patamon and Tailmon do. Just as the team resolves not to let the digital world be consumed, a bunch of these creepy goopy tentacles come out of the white void and one arm grabs all the human kids but not their Digimon. They get pulled into the void and the Digimon in rookie form try to chase after them but they fail and are separated. I think splitting the kids from the Digimon here is a wise choice for the end of the series, even if it's just for like a 15 minute segment. Let's see what these kids actually have learned, you know, when they don't have giant combat monsters to back them up. Can their virtues alone guide them? In the void, we stare face to face with the catastrophe itself, as well as Algamon. Now, Algamon takes it upon himself to explain to the kids and to the audience watching at home just what the plot of Digimon Adventure 2020 has been all along. And yes, I do have issues with the fact we only learned what was happening three episodes before the end, but what they give us here is kind of amazing stuff in my opinion. It's super compelling for Digimon, where it's true to existing Digimon rules, but it also gives this surprisingly dark bit of social commentary on the way we interact with each other on the internet. So here it goes, let me try to recap what we've learned. As we've known since 1999, Digimon undergo birth, life, and death, but death is not the end for Digimon. They're reborn as eggs, hatch into Digimon again, live, die again, and are reborn, etc. And that is why the digital world continues to exist. It's in this loop of life. But as I understand it, we come to the classic issue with immortality that can conundrum where the digital world just continues and continues and continues forever and we also know about the time difference between the human and the digital world from that first arc so keep that in mind from the way Algamon describes it we get the sense that the digital world has existed for countless ages millennia essentially and so the digital world itself eventually hits a crossroads where it said hey I've been doing this live die repeat thing for Ever. and now it's at a fork in the road and has two instincts kind of compelling it in each direction. The digital world itself thought, on one hand, I can break the chain and stop the cycle of rebirth and just end it all. And on the other hand, I can keep existing, keep living, continue the cycle of rebirth forevermore. These two instincts manifested into two physical things. The instinct to break the chain and end it all became the seed of the great catastrophe, nei Gaamon, and the instinct to continue existing became the digivices, actually. So then, both looking for help or consultation, both of these instinct objects reached out to the other world, to the human world, and sought the potential in humans to tip the scale in that instinct's favor. The instinct to continue, aka the Digivices, found the human children, our protagonists, who connected with Digimon and opened a new path to power. But the instinct to end it all found not the chosen children, but the network world created by the humans, aka the internet, where, quote, data filled with chaos and fear passed through it, producing negative energy. The instinct to end chose that energy as its power source rather than the human children to produce its next disaster, the end of everything. But what the instinct to end, aka the great catastrophe, found in the human's network world, quote, the endless negative energy filled within the network exceeded even their expectations. It was an abundant and delicious meal which produced more power and more consumption and more anger. Because of this, the instinct to end's 
mission kind of got sidetracked or grew where now it wanted both to end the digital world and to become more powerful and to consume everything. And so it no longer had its sights set on just ending the digital world cycle of rebirth, but because of the internet's negativity, kind of making it addicted to power and consumption, now this thing also wants to consume the human world. And so that right there, that is the story of Digimon Adventure 2020, or at least the behind the scenes setup. It took 65 episodes to fully understand what the heck was going on, who our villain is, and what it wants, but we finally know. The villain itself in some ways is the digital world, and the hero is also the digital world. The digital world is at a crossroads with wanting to continue to reboot, or just stop and end here. Which, can I say, I feel like this may be a really interesting meta commentary on the fact that Digimon Adventure 2020 is a reboot, and there's also been Zero Two, and Try, and Last Evolution Kizuna. I haven't quite pieced this together, but I have like a sense that there's a very cool commentary here on reboots. And can I also say that the fact that the Great Catastrophe latched onto the human internet as a source of negative energy, only to find it had even more negativity and chaos on there than it expected, that's also a pretty damning commentary on how the series writers feel about the internet, and hey, I mean, they're not wrong. I think this is an extremely cool little plot point or big plot point actually. The two forces of good versus evil, life versus death, are finding power in the darkness that humans put onto the internet and finding power in the goodness that humans are capable of when we're in person, face to face, taking care of each other, and I suppose also just the purity of you know, children. That is incredibly thought-provoking and cool to me. I always want Digimon stories to reflect on technology and where we're at, and not just be this kind of fantasy Wizard of Oz thing with Mon thrown at the end of the monster's names. And so this added detail about the negative energy of the internet actually surpassing the villain's expectations, that really scratches the itch for me, so bravo there. Okay, so are you still with me? Because there are a few more minutes of this episode to recap. While all of this is being explained to the kids in the void, back in the digital world, Commandamon is the one that gets the Digimon partners into the void with a final push. Be the Winners starts playing, which I think is a deeply underrated song, and criminal that we stopped playing it in the show as much when we got out of the Champions era. This Kamandamon push, it kind of touched me and it kind of made me realize he's the new Leomon in this reboot. Kamandamon didn't have like a violent demise or anything, but I realize he is the only real non-partner Digimon this series has that I would weep over if we lost him for good. The Digimon quickly find their way to the partners and break the chain gets going, we all know what's coming, we get a trail of evolutions. The fact the show didn't have very many scenes where the whole team is on deck, it makes these moments where we're all together Avengers style feel really good. I like the way they cut the ultimate evolutions together, definitely respecting our time while still giving us something really cool to look at, but unfortunately the same can't be said about the Megas evolution animations because they actually all appear through that beam of light evolution that Togemon and Bergermon often get. So this was a bummer, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and and hope that the unbelievable animation is coming in the next few episodes and we're just saving on the budget here to use to throw everything we've got into the finale. But the visual of Metal Garurumon and War Greymon evolving inside Algamon's stomach where the growth and energy from their evolutions causes Algamon's body to explode outwards is extremely cool even if it wasn't god tier animated just that concept is really cool. We don't even get a moment of feeling like we won though because right after the Algamon explosion we hear quote the time has come to consume life, to consume the world to consume all. And then the sky in Tokyo starts cracking, which is kind of all I ever wanted from the series. It's our long-awaited real-world element of the Digimon story. I'm really glad we have two more episodes, not just one, but you know, I would have really liked a full human world arc of some kind, but I'm just glad we're seeing some real-world element here at the final finish line. So there we go, that is the 65th episode, the setup to the final battle that will involve the fate of the humans and digital world, and that also gave us the explanation finally for what this show has been trying to say and, and trying to do all along. If it wasn't very obvious, I'm really impressed by the story it's given us here and the world building. Obviously I wish it was spaced out better, I didn't love that we basically had to go 60 plus episodes without knowing what was going on, but the answer we finally got here, I think personally is a super cool fantasy fiction story of an entire immortal world having an existential crisis on whether it should keep existing or give up on its own immortality. I think that's 
really smart and interesting. Plus, the cutting critique of internet culture kind of poisoning and enabling the instinct to end it all, to feel even worse about itself, and to want to consume more and end everything, that just really impressed me. I'm very happy with this lore, and now, honestly, at this point, I'm ready for 66 and 67 to just be action popcorn moments, and I'll be pretty happy with that. It would be cool to see the show have kids and people all over the world sending in positive energy through the network, aka the internet. Internet. Obviously, that's kind of an R war game thing and a bit of a Digimon cliche at this point, but based on the story setup they just gave us here, it would be cool here where we could teach the digital world's instinct to end, aka the great catastrophe, that hey, although all this horrible energy does exist on the internet, there's all this chaos, there is goodness on the internet too. It can be a channel for humans to spread goodness. So let's see if the show goes in that direction or not. This is already a super long video, so I'm not going to talk about Digimon Ghost Game here, but I I will have an unscripted Digimon Ghost game kind of trailer reaction on my second channel, the Digino02, up later today. So if you're watching this after Sunday, please head over to my channel to hear my thoughts on the next Digimon anime ghost game. That's starting on October 3rd, only a week after this show ends. I'll have a link in the bio as soon as that video is up. So if you're watching this at 11 a.m. on Sunday, sorry, it's not up yet, but I'm working on it. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe if you haven't, and definitely leave a comment telling me what you thought about the story revelations. Did I do an okay job? explaining it. Let me know if I missed anything or just what you thought in general. But yeah, everyone, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.